Hey my people, welcome to this video tutorial on debugging. So without wasting much time, let's get to it. So what is debugging? In computer programming and software development, debugging is the process of finding and resolving bugs. Simple as that. So you may want to ask, so what are bugs? Bugs are defects or problem that prevents your current operation within the program, your software or a system. So you can have bugs in your code and it breaks down your code. So your code cannot perform efficiently or it can't progress beyond where it is currently. So that is a bug. And the process of removing that problem or resolving the solution is called debugging. And you have to understand that debugging tactics can involve interactive debugging, control flow analysis, unit testing and integration testing, log file analysis, monitoring the application or system level, the memory dumps and the profiling. So many programming language and software development tools also offer programs to aid in debugging known as debuggers. That is to say, we have a lot of tools that we can use in debugging and they are called debuggers. So probably you may be wondering, so does that mean I don't have to do it by hand? Yes, definitely. So there are tools that can help you in debugging your code. But personally, I agree with some other developers who say that it is cool to be able to debug manually. That is, it shows that you understand what you're doing. So while we understand, I agree that there are tools with, that helps with debugging, it is necessary for you to understand how to debug manually. Remember, you wrote your codes manually. You know, you type them in yourself. So why can't you find the issues with the code by yourself manually? So that leads us to the next process. So apart from the tools that will help you, you can do it manually. And one way to do that manually is what is referred to as the rubber duck debugging. So this is a debugging te te technique that involves you explaining your code to a rubber duck. Simple as that. So in this debugging style, you're talking to a duck on your computer or on your, on your, on your table. So you're explaining your codes to a doc. It's not like the doc is going to help you with solving the issue, you know, by talking back at you. But this system is going to open up your brain, you know, to see the issues in a way you've not seen it before. And how does it work? So this is it. The first step is you explain your broken code and the reason, the goal for the code. So what does this code want to do? Is it a for loop? So what is it going to do? Don't worry about going into details. Just tell the doc that, oh, this is a for loop and I'm trying to count from 1 to 20. You understand? So you say that to the doc. Then line by line, explain what each step of the code is supposed to do. So what is the flow of the whole function or method that is not working? Don't skip any details. So tell the doc everything that that code is supposed to do line by line. And as you keep saying this, your rubber dog friend is definitely going to spot it and if you explain your code properly, you will find the details. Now, the funny thing is, the dog is not going to tell you the answer. But the idea of you talking to a second person, now it, could, it doesn't have to be a dog, it could be a person, but most people are busy. So that's why you need to get a dog. So the idea of you talking to the dog, explaining your code, is funny, right? But while explaining it you'll be able to spot the issue you, what you've not done right it could be a missing semicolon or a comma that is somewhere that is not placed properly or something so your solution might just actually be there with you would find it if you explain your code step by step so the reason why the rubber dog technique is well loved is that in the process of talking to the dog you find your problem remember when you're coding you're not coding because you are looking for issues with your code. You are coding just to give solutions. But when you encounter a problem and you can look at your code continuously, you may not find the issue. But talking to a rubber dog, you will be able to see what has happened. So most times, it could be that you made a typo or you are operating on the wrong variable or your condition is not checking the opposite of what you thought. So something is going to be revealed when you talk or you speak your code out to the rubber dog. So you explain everything to the rubber dog, you explain your code, the goals, and the steps, the, the flows your code is supposed to take line by line. And also, you explain everything about the functions and how the code is supposed to work. So, simply, by explaining your program to the dog, 
you often find flaw in your code. So let's try out an example. Let's debug together. So for us to carry this out, let's create a file. So I'll call this file doc.c. Okay, so theme doc.c. And now let's create our header. Okay. And we create the function. So inside of this function, we want a for loop. So let's declare the variable for the increment. So we say, so that's the initialization. Then let's carry out our condition and the increment. And what do we want this function to do? We want it to print out I love rubber dog debugging style on new line. To our return and here we are with our function and we are done so let's save this and let's compile this so doc.c into doc file and as you can see we just encountered a lot of error now we have to put on our debugging ads and fix this issue so the first issue here is saying invalid pre processing directive include do you mean include so you have to take note that you should be able to read errors if you can't read errors you can't debug properly and your program is going to tell you where it's finding those errors so this one is on line one so we have an error on line one and it has to do with the spelling of our include and looking at it i see that we are we are also importing an invalid header so we have to fix that issue on line one on line three, it says return type defaults to int main void. So it's a warning. The function can still run, but it's important that we put our, what's it called? Our return type. So let's fix those two. Then we come back and see what we can do with the rest. So let's go in and fix the first issue. So it says, oh, it's supposed to be include. And I can see another one. It's supposed to be stdio.h, not the way it was written. And it told us that we should put a return type. So we should put our int. We are using int. So let's go back and recompile to see if we have any other issue. Okay. So we are waiting for it to recompile. So I had to stop the compilation because, you know, obviously something is breaking it down. So let's go back into the file and just try to visually, you know, since we had other errors, we can actually look at it and fix our errors ourselves. So we already have the int here. So if we go line by line, we can already see that we have some issues. Like for this, i is not supposed to be set to i. So we have to change that to zero or one depending on what you want to use so i think that's that should be the last issue that we should have and now obviously we are good to go so we have an i here from nowhere so sometimes when your code is badly written it breaks the compiler so the compiler has issues with running the code or compiling the code so now that i think i've been able to fix everything so like what i told you you check it line by line and you ensure that everything is supposed is is the way it's supposed to be so i is equal to zero and i is less than equal to 10 i plus plus then it should print i love rubber dog debugging so i think this looks pretty good for us so let's go back and recompile this okay, 
save check it one last time before i exit then i will clear this page and let's try again so let's compile again but wait so instead of compiling completely let's check our code with betty so let's ensure that we are also betty compliant before we proceed so betty doc dot c and now we have issues so from betty betty has issues with the open brace missing a blank line after declaration okay so space required around the condition um the assignment operators space required before opening brace so let's see if we can fix all these issues so i would advise that you write out your issues or if you can note them in your head so that when you go into betty you can do everything properly so let me clear then i'll go into the file again so the code is okay but let's make it betty compliant too so the first thing betty is saying is that we have to drop this guy okay then there should be a space after declaration there should be a space here and there should be spaces around these guys and this guy and we should drop this guy okay and this guy should be in a bracket and also we have to put a little information about our code here okay so we say main what does the main function do let's just say prints out a statement then what is the return the return is returns zero when successful then we can close our comments and drop out so this is it we've actually made our code betty compliant so let's check if betty is going to find issues with this code again so let's run betty doc.c and as you can see all betty errors have been resolved successfully so we can clear this page and go back to compiling all right so we've been able to make our code betty compliant now it's time for us to compile it okay so compile successfully and let's run it so guys you can see our code has been compiled successfully using gcc after we were able to solve the issues that gcc raised and also we were able to make the code betty compliant by fixing all the issues with betty and now we have our code running properly on our screen so guys that is that on debugging so we talked about the rubber dog debugging style and this is debugging so now you know that debugging is how you fix issues in your code and one way to do this is using the rubber dog debugging style so guys i'll see you in the next video thank you